Hi and welcome to another episode of Kids Own Online. Thanks for joining with us and we trust that God will bless the time that we spend together. This week we're carrying on the memory verse that we've been learning for the past two weeks and we'll be having another look at some Bible animals and the lessons that they can teach us. And of course we'll be having another story uh, about the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and how the Lord Jesus appeared uh, to different people after he rose again from the dead and Gordon will bring us the story tonight. And of course, as usual, we'll start off with some singing. Let's start off with this one. This one is all about the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and it tells us he's alive, he's alive, he's alive forevermore. Jesus is risen from the dead. He's never going to die again. He's the one who has conquered death and he is alive. He's alive, he's alive, he's alive forevermore. Jesus is risen from the dead. He's alive, he's alive, he's alive forevermore. Jesus is risen from the dead. Sin no longer has dominion, Satan's power is broken down. He has triumphed, hallelujah, and he wears the victor's crown. He's alive, he's alive, he's alive forevermore. Jesus is risen from the dead. Well, if the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, the fact that he's alive, gives the assurance and gives the certainty that he can save. What is it that can wash away my sin? Well, there's nothing but the blood of the Lord Jesus and the death of the Lord Jesus on the cross of Calvary. That's how we can be forgiven. This next song thinks again about the cross of the Lord Jesus and how it was for my sins that the Lord Jesus died. Well, if the fact that the Lord Jesus died means that I can be forgiven and the fact that the Lord Jesus is risen again means that I can be sure that I can be forgiven and sure that I can be in heaven. Well, what's best of all is that if I put my trust in the Lord Jesus and the Lord Jesus comes to live in my heart and joy can be the flag flown high from the castle of my heart when the King, the Lord Jesus, is in residence there. Oh, oh, oh. 
Right time now, let's do the prayer drill. Let's go one, two, three. Father, again, we give thanks that we can come together for another Kids Own Online. We give thanks again for things that we can sing about. We thank thee for the Lord Jesus. We thank thee that he's alive and he's alive forevermore. We thank thee for one who died so that we can be forgiven, one who died so that our sins can be taken away, who died to take the punishment for our sins. But we thank thee for one who's, li uh, who's living, who's risen again, who's a wonderful saviour. And so we just pray again that thou would help us as we spend this time together and as we uh, look into thy word later and we hear a story from thy word the bible later we ask thy blessing and thy help as we give thee thanks in the name of the lord jesus amen let's sing this one now god's love is the best love that the world has ever ever known <laughs> Quick look at Bible animals again. Who can remember what the first animal was that we looked at? <clears throat> what animal is that? That's a leopard. And what did we think about a leopard? Well, the Bible says, can a leopard change its spots? And the answer is no. It's born with spots and it dies with spots. What are we born with? Well, we're born with sin. <clears throat> and it'd be awful, wouldn't it, if we were to die with our sins not forgiven? Well, what was last week's? Memory verse, uh, not memory verse. What was last week's animal? What's that? It's a sheep, isn't it? And what did we think about a sheep? Well, we thought that a sheep is like us. Sheep have a tendency to wander off and get lost. And all we, like sheep, have gone astray. We're like sheep. We've got lost. We've wandered away from God. And it's awful. It'd be awful if we stayed lost wouldn't it? But we thought that the Lord Jesus came and the Lord Jesus came to seek and to save that which was lost. Well, what do you think this week's animal is? What's that? It's not a sheep, is it? No, it's a goat. A goat. Now, in the Bible, there was a day in the year when the Israelites, they took two goats, not one, but two goats. And one goat was to be a sacrifice. One goat was to be killed and its blood was to be taken right into the presence of God. And it was a sacrifice so that God could forgive the sins of the people. What happened to the other goats? Well, the other goat, well, the sins of the people were confessed on it, over its head and it was taken away, way, way, way out into the desert. To a place where it could never come back again and it was left there and that reminds us of the rest of the verse that we started or the rest when we thought about a sheep it said all we like sheep have gone astray and the lord has laid on him that's the lord jesus the iniquity the sin of us all the lord jesus died he shed his blood so that our sins could be forgiven and he's taken our sins far far away and they could never be brought back again. The Bible says, as far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. If we put our trust in the Lord Jesus, our sins, every single one of them, are all forgiven. Let's sing this one now. One way God said to get to heaven, what is it? Jesus is the only way. <laughs>
Time for a memory verse now. Remember, we've been learning the same verse, or we've been uh, we're starting the next verse uh, tonight. But we've been learning the same verse for the past couple of weeks. And how does it go? Remember? It says this all together. And this is Paul writing. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received. Let's say it while the words disappear. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received. And what was it? How that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 3. Let's say it together. How that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 3. And while the words are disappearing. How that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 3. That's wonderful, isn't it, that the Lord Jesus would die in our place. But that's not how it finishes. It goes on. And it says this. And that he was buried. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 4. And that's what happens when someone has died, isn't it? We bury them. And he was put in the tomb. But you know, that would be awful if that was all that happened. And we'll think next week about what happened next. But let's say it together. This one's easy, isn't it? One, two, three, four, five words only this week's memory verses. So let's say it together. And that he was buried. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 4. And again, and that he was buried. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 4. I don't think we need to practice it anymore, do we? We'll say it as the words go away. You ready? And all together once again, and that he was buried. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 4. Can we say it from the beginning? For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received. How that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, and that he was buried. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 3 and Four. As I say, we'll find out what the rest of the verse says next week. Let's sing one more before Gordon comes to speak to us. Wide, wide is the ocean, high as the heavens above, deep, deep as the deepest sea is my Saviour's love. How many saviours are there? That's right, there's just one. And who is the Saviour? That's right, it's the Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> Story time now. Over to you, Gordon. And now in words and girls, in the last couple of weeks we've been hearing about the resurrection appearances of the Lord Jesus. We've been hearing how he died on the cross, but on the third day he rose triumphantly, amazingly, miraculously from the dead, early in the morning on the first day of the week. And a couple of weeks ago we heard about Mary, she came to the tomb, and she met the Lord Jesus. I we also hear how Peter and John come and find the tomb empty. Now later that evening, on the first day of the week, it's where our story is set today. Now the disciples, in the evening, were in a room together, praying. The doors are all locked because they're afraid. They're afraid the soldiers will come and arrest them. Try and kill them, possibly crucify them. So the doors are all locked. And then, amazingly, miraculously, the Lord Jesus appears in the middle of the room where they are. 
Now you'd be afraid, wouldn't you, if someone just appeared in a locked room? Now Lord Jesus says, be at peace, don't worry, don't be afraid, he says to him. And he shows him his hands with the nail prints and his feet and his side where the spear had went in to show that it was really him. And you know what it tell, tells us in the story? The disciples were glad when they seen the Lord Jesus. It brought them comfort, peace, assurance that he was there with them. But they seen him alive. Now the Lord Jesus said that he would send them out shortly to preach his message of the gospel. Send them out in the power of the Holy Spirit. Which would mean that they could, at that time they could do great miracles, heal people. And tell people about this message of Jesus, how they can be saved as well. Now Jesus disappears again. But you know, one of the disciples was missing. He didn't see the Lord Jesus appearing in the room. A disciple called Thomas. So disciples come and they tell Thomas, we've seen the Lord. Now Thomas says, unless I see the print of the nails in his hands and his feet for myself, put my finger in to these, these nail prints and put my hand in his side where the spear went in, I'm not going to believe. And you know, that's why Thomas gets this name, Doubting Thomas. He doubted. Now, another eight days pass, so the following week, the disciples are met again. But this time Thomas is there. And you know, the Lord Jesus appears again in the room and says again, Peace be unto you. Don't be afraid. And he speaks directly to Thomas. And he says, Reach out your finger. Here's my hands. Put your finger into those nail prints. Put your hand into my side. And you know what he says to him? Be not faithless, but believing. So don't be without faith. Don't doubt. But believe. Have faith. And you know Thomas, I think he was ashamed, embarrassed, that he doubted the Lord Jesus. But he was utterly convinced now. And he just had to confess, my Lord and my God. He recognised that the Lord Jesus was truly one who had come, the Son of God, one who is God. And he was his Lord now. And you know what Jesus says to Thomas? Thomas, because you've seen me, you have believed. But blessed, more blessed are those that won't see, but actually believe evidence. And accept me as their saviour. Now, this is really the end of the little story today. So what can we learn from this? Now, we can learn that Lord Jesus truly rose from the dead because he appeared to the disciples, to them all, his 12 disciples, 11 disciples now, because Judas had betrayed the Lord Jesus. And that in the upper room, in this room, first time, and then again with Thomas. But you know, Thomas doubted. Now what about you? You've heard this story today. You've heard this story every week at Kids Zone online about Lord Jesus. Now Thomas doubted. Will you doubt or will you believe? Believe the evidence of, of the witnesses, that we, the eyewitnesses we hear and these stories in the Bible about how, how the Lord Jesus rose from the dead. And how we have a sense forgiven if we put our faith in him. You know the Lord Jesus says. Be not faithless but believe. Now that's the message that comes to us today boys and girls. We're not to be without faith. We need to have faith. And it's very simple faith. Just to come. 
Accept the Lord Jesus died on the cross to pay the penalty for our sins, to take our punishment for the bad things we've done. And believe that he rose from the dead, shows that he was that perfect son of God. And we'll accept him as our saviour, as our Lord. Like Thomas to say, my Lord and my God and my saviour. Well, thanks again for joining with us for another Kids Own Online. Thanks to Free Bible Images for the pictures and to Cedar One Kids for the theme tune. Thanks again to you for watching. And if you want to get in contact with us, the contact details are on the screen. Find us on Facebook at Inner Leaf and Gospel Hall. Get in touch with us. Let us know that you're watching. It'd be great to hear from you. Until next time, until another episode of Kids Own Online, goodbye and God bless. <laughs>